students at the University of Aveiro. Uh, although this work that I'm going to talk about is the, the work that I did uh, while in my research grant. grant. And um, uh, I think that's it. <laughs> okay. okay, can I start? Yes, you can already start. You are on time. Okay, just change here. Okay, uh, just uh, a minute. It's okay. Okay. You can see, we can already see your-, your... your, your The presentation, yes. Okay, thank you. So th uh, first of all, I'd like to, to thank the organization for allowing me to, to speak about my work, which is entitled Development of Polysaccharide Based Carriers for Pulmonary Insulin Delivery. This work arose from the need to develop non-invasive alternatives for insulin delivery because diabetes is a chronic disease that is char characterized by high uh, glucose, blood glucose levels. And currently, uh, uh, insulin-dependent patients manage the disease by frequently injecting insulin um, by frequently injecting insulin. And these fr frequent injections can cause discomfort and pain and even bruises and infections at the injection zone. So there was the need to develop non-invasive alternatives. Um, and uh, many of, of non-invasive alternatives are currently being developed. And pulmonary delivery is an attractive alternative. Pulmonary delivery is the, the inhalation of a drug formulation through the mouth or nose with its later deposition in the lower airways. This route is particularly, uh, especially interesting because of the large surface area of the lung tissue, which is more than 100 uh, uh, square meters, the thin epithelium at the alveoli, and because lung tissue is highly vascularized. Therefore, uh, the drugs can pass easily to the blood circulation. For pulmonary delivery, the aerodynamic diameter of the drug formulation determines the site of deposition. And for deep lung deposition, the, the delivery systems must have between one and five micrometers. Therefore, there is the need for micronization techniques. And most micronization techniques uh, require high temperatures, but insulin is a, a protein that is very prone to degradation by high temperatures. Therefore, there is the need to incorporate insulin into carriers. So it can maintain its stability during powder preparation and even storage. And polysaccharides uh, are considered elite carriers because they are biocompatible, biodegradable, and can be easily functionalized. And galactomannans and ribinogalactans are polysaccharides that may um, uh, serve as carriers for insulin. Galactomannans are polysaccharides uh, composed of a mannose backbone which have um, uh, galactose substitute, ah, uh, the mannose uh, residues are linked by beta-1,4 linkages, and they have uh, galactose substitutions linked by alpha-1,6 uh, linkages. And uh, some arabinose substitutions may also occasionally be found, as well as some glucose residues in the main backbone. Arabinogalactans are polysaccharides composed of a galactose uh, backbone linked by beta-1,3 uh, linkages and have uh, um, beta-1,6 linked uh, galactosyl side chains, which in turn may be substituted at the O3 position with arabinosyl modis. Uh, so the aim of this work was to develop polysaccharide-based microparticles, namely using galactomannans and arabinogalactans that were able to protect and deliver insulin to the systemic circulation via the pulmonary route. We extracted the, the polysaccharides from coffee beverages, espresso and instant coffee, and both samples uh, were subjected to the same treatment of polysaccharide purification. First, we applied ultrafiltration and dialysis to remove all the, the low molecular weight material and isolate the high molecular weight material, to which we later applied sequential ethanol precipitations with ethanol at 50% to recover galactomannans and ethanol at 75% to recover arabinogalactans. 
In the supernatant, after the ethanol precipitations, we expect to have uh, melanoidins. And melanoidins are high molecular weight compounds that are not yet well characterized, but uh, they are reported as being brown compounds that derive from Maillard reactions between carbohydrates and pro proteins, and can also incorporate some phenolic compounds such as caffeine and chlorogenic acid in caffeic acid. So then we characterized our uh, extracts um, by, uh, for their polysaccharide composition by gas chromatography coupled with flame ionization detection from the, the ethanol precipitation with ethanol at 50% from espresso, we see that we, we recovered an extract very rich in galactomannan. We see that this sample is uh, almost totally composed of sugars and uh, especially of manos and galactose. So this is our extract very rich in galactomannans. From the ethanol precipitation at 50%, but from uh, instant coffee, we see that we have uh, uh, an extract that is composed by both polysaccharides because we have similar contents of manos and of galactose. This was unexpected because um, uh, et in literature, ethanol precipitation is reported to uh, precipitate mainly galactomannans and not arabinogalactans. But we know that coffee suffers a lot of treatments to become instant coffee. And so those uh, treatments may have altered somehow arabino those arabinogalactans. And uh, the altered arabinogalactans may have uh, may be now precipitated with uh, ethanol at 50%. So this is our extract that is a, a mixture of both polysaccharides. From the ethanol precipitation with 75% ethanol from instant coffee, we recovered an extract that is rich in arabinogalactans. We see that uh, we have a purification in the, the, in the sugar content. We have uh, uh, around 80% of uh, sugars in the sample. And mainly composed, it's, it's mainly composed of galactose. So we see that we, we purified arabinogalactans. So this is our, our extract rich in arabinogalactans. The, in the, the uh, supernatant after the ethanol precipitations, uh, uh, the, the extracts from both espresso and instant coffee uh, presented similar compositions with a 40% of sugar content. And although having both polysaccharides, galactomannans and arabinogalactans, we saw that it had a, a higher content of arabinogalactans. Since this is the extract where we, we, are ex we expect to have melanodines, this sugar content is most uh, probably uh, from the, the polysaccharides that are uh, incorporated in the composition of the melanoidins. So this is our extract rich in melanoidins. So then we obtain the microparticles by spray drying each extract uh, in the presence of, of insulin at 10%. We recovered the microparticles that had a mass yield of around 70%, which means that was, there was some loss of material and we saw, but we saw that uh, our insulin content in the microparticles were averaged 11.5, which is a higher percentage than that we had than than that we the we had in the solution that we fed the spread dryer. So this means that our loss of material was uh, probably a loss of the polysaccharides because probably they adsorbed to the to the walls of the spray dryer and we didn't lose insulin in the process. So then we wanted to see the, the behavior of insulin release from our microparticles. So we incubated the microparticles in PBS with 1% twin 80 at 37 degrees Celsius and, and under slow agitation at 100 RPMs. And we took, um, uh, uh, aliquots at several time points and analyzed insulin 
uh, with HPLC and through a calibration curve, we quantified insulin in those aliquots. Uh, this method has also allowed to uh, check for uh, the quality of insulin, the quality control of insulin. We see this big peak here is a normal insulin, and this little shoulder is the emanated, the emanated insulin, which is a, um, a degradation product from insulin, probably because of the high temperatures of the spray dryer. This uh, deaminated insulin appeared in all the samples, but it was always less than 10%. So it is a small fraction. So overall, we can say that our macroparticles were able to protect insulin during the, the powder preparation by spray drying. Then to see the, the insulin release behavior from the galactomannan based macroparticles that were obtained uh, spray drying this extract with insulin, we see that the release was linear right from the start up until it reached the plateau, although it didn't quite reach the, the full content of insulin. Um, this linearity is probably probably because of the swelling of the, the polysaccharide of the galactomannan. So this is water starts to penetrate the microparticles, thus dissolving the, the insulin and releasing it in a controlled and linear matter, manner. From the same image, we can see that all the microparticles had less than five micrometers. Regarding the ribinogalactin-based microparticles that were obtained uh, from this extract, we see that the, the release of insulin presented an initial lag phase. And then uh, it uh, was also, uh, it released also in a gradual manner. This uh, may have happened, this lag phase may have happened because arabinogalactins have uh, arabinose motis, which may confer some hydrophobicity to the microparticles. So there, there is this, uh, some sort of resistance to water penetration, and therefore we see this delay uh, to start the, the release. But then it released, it released gradually. Again, from the same image, we can see that the microparticles had five or less micrometers. Then from the microparticles that were composed by both polysaccharides, we see that we have an intermediary behavior uh, between the behavior seen for the galactomannan-based microparticles and the erbinogalactin-based microparticles. We see that especially in this initial phase, in the first 30 minutes, because we don't have the linearity that we saw from from uh, for the galactomannan based macroparticles, nor we see an exactly a lag phase as we saw for the binogalactin based macroparticles. So it's, they have a, an intermediary behavior. Uh, and, and thus seeing the contribution of both polysaccharides for the, the, the behavior of the release. Regarding the melanoidin based microparticles, they had a, an interesting um, um, uh, behavior for insul in insulin release. They presented a burst effect that happened around the 50 minute mark. Uh, that is why this deviation is so high because the, the, um, the burst effect could happen, uh, could happen between the 40 minutes and the 50 minutes or between the 50 minutes and the 60 minutes suggesting that the burst happens um, around the 50 minute mark. Uh, this, this behavior, this burst release uh, may be suggestive of a, a sort of capsule like uh, structure. And because melanoidins have a complex, uh, such a complex structure that is not yet well known, perhaps they are forming some sort of inter interaction between them that uh, may form that capsule that, um, th that once it uh, breaks, it releases all the, the insulin content. Again, from the same image, we see that macroparticles have less than five micrometers, although this image isn't the best, but we haven't done uh, others yet. 
So this is a representative uh, image of our microparticles. All of them presented this raisin-like morphology and had uh, geometric diameters of less than five micrometers, which are characteristics that indicate good aerodynamic di diameters. But we still need to do further tests about the aer aerodynamics of the microparticles. So far, then we've seen that uh, our extracts are able to form micro to form microparticles that can protect the insulin during powder preparation and deliver it one upon hydration. We've seen that that the lactomannan based microparticles release insulin in a linear manner right from the start, but arabino galactin based microparticles release insulin in a gradual manner only after an, an initial lag phase. And when we combine the two polysaccharides, we see an intermediary behavior between those two. Um, because we saw that the geometric diameter was within one and five micrometers and uh, um, the microparticles presented raisin-like morphology, we can predict a, a, predict a good aerodynamic uh, Property, good aerodynamic properties to reach the deep lung. And since uh, our microparticles released insulin in, the, in the, the 60 minutes that were analyzed, we can predict a potential approach to control postprandial hyperglycemia, which basically means that instead of uh, 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 that um, patients that are insulin dependent, instead of injecting insulin before meals, they can just inhale the, these microparticles. So again, I'd like to thank the organization for letting me speak. Uh, thank my supervisors, Dr. Claudia Palsos and Professor Manuel Antonio Quimbra, and thank Dr. Paulo Ferreira for the same analysis and all uh, of our group. And uh, thank you all for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you very much, Sara, for uh, your contribution, for sharing with us your results of this interesting work. Uh, we, have already, we have already one question for you. That is, add these microparticles on sp spherical shape in solution. Is there any difference between the hydrodynamic diameter before and after the release of the um, bioactive molecule? Well, we we haven't seen them in solution uh, because what we we do is we we prepare a solution with the polysaccharides and the, the insulin, and then we feed the spray dryer. We don't uh, we haven't seen if they form microparticles in the solution. I don't think so. That's why um, it, there is the need for the spray dryer. Um, if uh, well, the second part, sorry. No, I think the question is related with the the, um, the morphology of your microparticles in 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 solution. When you put your microparticles in a aqueous, for example, in an aqueous environment, are they spherical or not? They change their morphology. I think the question is more. Uh, related to this aspect. Okay, um, we haven't seen that. Uh, what I think uh, happens, it, it's uh, when um, they uh, hydrate, they just uh, release, uh, they just uh, break down. I, I don't think, I don't know if they, they become spherical or not. We haven't seen that, but uh, I don't think so. Okay, you don't check the, the um, the morphology of your particles after the release assays, right? No, no, because they they disintegrate. Okay, that's why they release insulin. Okay, we have here another question um, that uh, it regards uh, if you can use DLS to check it easily. If you can use DLS to check this aspect that we were discussing, DLS. Yes. Uh, if I can check the the the, the uh, microparticles in solution. Yeah, I think this uh, yes is related to the previous one. If you can use DLS to check um, the these aspects regarding the morphology 
of uh, your micro uh, particles? Well, I, I don't really, we haven't tried that uh, also, but uh, since the micro particles dissolve upon hydration in the, the first 60 minutes, uh, I don't think that is going to be very possible, especially because uh, right from the start, uh, and, and we saw that in the galactomannan based macroparticles, they start to, to release insulin, which we think it's because the microparticles start, start to dissolve, to yeah. break down. So mm -hmm. it would, it would um, uh, input a lot of variability in the in the the solution so i don't think it would be possible but yes. we we haven't tried yes yes considering that your particles integrate and deliver the the insulin yeah. uh, it doesn't make too much sense to analyze them at least it's important to confirm and to see how they are after deliver but if they don't have any more and more uh, spherical or this kind of morphology it wouldn't make uh, sense to do it. I also have a question, a more general question. Uh, you are using uh, extracts, polysaccharide extracts, uh, and as you know, uh, plants and biomass composition is quite variable depending in, in several factors. How this could affect um, the properties of your microparticles uh, is this a problem for this application or no? Uh, we tested two matrix, matrixes, uh, espresso and instant. Although they are both coffee, they, they have uh, uh, different treatments. So we know that the, the polysaccharides aren't exactly uh, e uh, similar, aren't exactly equal. And uh, we, I didn't present all the results, but uh, we saw that uh, it, that didn't affect. They had uh, similar responses. Uh, for example, the, the ones that were purified in galactomannans had uh, similar responses and um, uh, similar insulin release behaviors. So I don't think that is going to be a, a, a significant problem. Uh, it might vary uh, just a little bit, but not uh, significantly. Okay. And, and also, also, I like to, to also point out that we we actually did also with galactomannans from locust bean gum that I didn't present here also, but it presented that linearity that we saw with the galactomannans from coffee. Okay. And uh, I think uh, these results are interesting and can be a, a start for other uh, type of materials because with these results, we have already a picture about how the composition of your uh, polysaccharide extracts could influence uh, the delivery of insulin. So Sara, thank you very much for your contribution. And um, now uh, we will have a, a break